Blinded by the devil, born already ruined Stone cold dead as I stepped out of the womb By his grace I have been touched, by his word I have been healed By his hand I've been delivered, by his spirit I've been sealed Now I'm saved Welcome back, dear friends. It's the Matt Freedom Show on AFR Talk. Coming to you today from Cincinnati, the Midwest Homeschool Convention. So delighted to be here. And, of course, that means we're going to have a lot of guests. And I tell you what, if you want some great guests, you can find them around this place because there are so, so, so many people that care about worldview. There's so many people that care about kids. And uh, what is kind of encouraging is they're concerned about your kids, not only theirs, but yours as well. We are delighted to have with us right now a gentleman named Mark Hamby, who is with the Lamplighter Guild for Creative Disciplines. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming today. Thanks, Matt. Good to be here. You kind of had to get out early to be here, so we appreciate it. That's all right. I'll be speaking a little bit. Listen, uh, talk to me about the Lamplighter Guild here. Uh, you're getting about some exciting things with this. We want to hear about them. Sure. Uh, July 17th through 22nd, we're going to do something unprecedented, something that's never been done before. Um, this all started actually when I was um, um, looking at what Francis Schaeffer did with the Labrie. And I read his son's book on Addicted to Mediocrity, and mm -hmm. I realized long ago that God created us in his image to be able to reflect his glory on the earth. That's what attracts people to the gospel. And today we, we live in a day of just image saturation where people are no longer imagining. And um, because we have an image-saturated culture with the media, um, and because the lack of imagination is just, there, it's just prevalent in our culture, that people are no longer reaching a high level of excellence in their skills. Well, I came in contact with a group of guys, the guys who produced Adventures in Odyssey, Chronicles of Narnia, mm -hmm. um, Les Miserables, uh, Left Behind. Well, these guys heard about our books one time. And this is about a year and a half ago, and we started um, producing radio drama that is now in 19 countries on 1,000 stations. Mm. These are like world-class dramas on the edge of your seat. In fact, we're using... We're using actors right now from Chronicles of Narnia, from Pirates of the Caribbean, Lord of the Rings. We've got John Reese davies of Lord of the Rings as our host. And so as we started developing these, these amazing productions, we thought, you know, what better opportunity do we have right now than to use these skilled masters, masters in sound design, masters in, in um, music composition, music engineering, voice acting. In fact, one of the actors was the, um, the actor in Chronicles of Narnia who was the half man, half horse. Mm, yeah. what, what a brilliant actor. We're going to have him, Phyllis, Philip Glassborough, John Fornoff, John Campbell, Alan Hurley, Todd Bastide. They're going to come, and we're going to go to a 250-room castle in the Catskills in July, mm. and we're going to teach 16 to 50-year-olds how to reach the highest level of excellence in the dramatic arts, in the visual arts, in photography, videography, greenhouse management, rustic furniture making, and uh, in culinary art. We're going to try to surround the students with the highest level of excellence so that they'll be inspired to use their God giftedness to be able to excel in their God giftedness to reflect the glory of God in the earth. Interesting. One of the things you brought up was imagination and uh, mm -hmm. just to do what we can do to really jumpstart some imagination because I think there's so much of education today that seems to stifle it. Yeah. When you're around masters, it inspires you. Mm. Um, we, we built a house 12 years ago. In the front of it, I wanted, uh, I wanted Fieldstone. We live in Pennsylvania. And I had to wait five years for this mason to come and do the stonework on my house because he was, he was the best. Mm. He not only charged me more than anybody else, but I waited. Whenever anyone goes to my house today, the very first thing that they say to me is, who did that stonework? Mm. It, because excellence and beauty attracts people. And when we can inspire people to, first of all, to put away the childish things, put away the media influence. You know, Neil Postman, he said that we are amusing ourselves to death. Yes. And... I don't know if you know what the word amuse means, but when I found out what this meant, it changed my perspective. The word amuse comes from two words, A, a negative particle, and muse means to think. People are no longer thinking, and the reason why is because the more that you take images in, video games, TV, films, the more you take images in, it imagines for you, and it restricts your own ability to be able to imagine. And how did God create us? He created us in his image so that we can imagine how to display the glory of God mm. on the earth. If you were to talk to some uh, parents today to say, we really need to do everything possible to ignite uh, children's imaginations today, what would be some of the tips you'd give to them? How do we ignite imagination so that we are indeed thinking, but thinking creatively? You know, last night I did a seminar on uh, the Great Awakening and uh, how, to, how to replace the images with in, in instilling it in the imagination. And the way you do that is not to throw the TV out all of a sudden. 
find things that are better, we, the substitute principle. So that's what we're doing here at Lamplighter. You know, we're, we're getting these audio dramas so that it ignites the imagination again with role models. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 5, I believe, is the key for parents. Now, this is the key. Suffering or adversity produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope will never disappoint us. So if a child sees role models where they're enduring great difficulty, that inspires them. If they don't see it in other people, and they're constantly always seeing, you know, always seeing the, you know, in a computer game, for example, okay, they kill everybody and the game ends or they press a button if they want to start it over again. But in real life, they get to see people who are willing to suffer because they believe that there is a God in whom nothing is impossible. And now what happens is their faith starts to become exercised, and, and now they're participating with God. Now they get to experience real, authentic spiritual growth because they're participating in God himself, with God himself. Mm, interesting. So much of this has to come down with parents with kids. If you're going to spark an imagination, it's one thing to plug in the curriculum, but if you plug in the curriculum and your parents aren't moving with it, uh, they are the ones that are going through a certain degree of suffering because of their stand with the Lord. They're the ones that are doing great deeds, and they're doing them with their children. Uh, you can't do it apart from parents, can you? No. and if, Well, you can, but it's not as easy. If a parent is doing it with their children, if a parent is modeling for their children, first of all, humility. Okay. If a, God says, I reject the proud, but I'll give grace to the humble. If a parent is modeling humility, then a parent has the power of God in their lives because God says, I'll lift them up. Um, if a parent is reading to their children with the stories and they're participating with the child, they, the parent now is able to demonstrate for the child if a parent loses their job, if a parent has some difficulty at work. Now the parent is demonstrating to the children what it means to demonstrate true holiness because they're willing to endure because they believe that God has brought this difficulty into their lives. We're talking with Mark Hamby right now. He's got an excellent website. You need to get to it. In fact, I'm on it right now, lamplighter.net. Uh, lamplighter.net and when you get to that you're going to find out all the things that have been articulated here and you're going to very much appreciate how you can plug in uh, talk to us well, one more time about this event you've got coming up and how people can uh, get involved sure. they can go to uh, either lamplighter.net or lamplighterguild.com and what we're going to have there is a week of inspirational training with the greatest masters in the dramatic arts and visual arts from around the world mm. we're going to come all together these are the guys who help produce and, and um, engineer and act and, uh, and teach in Chronicles of Narnia, Les Miserables, Left Behind, and now the Lamplighter Theater. And these guys are coming together for one purpose. They want to inspire. They're going to teach. What, is it, what does it take to reach a high level of excellence in whatever skill God's given you so that we can now reflect the glory of God on the earth to be able to create an appetite in other people to mm. ask us of the reason of the hope that is in us. Oh, you, you mentioned one of my favorite books a moment ago, Neil Postman's Amusing Ourselves to Death. Mm. In the beginning of that volume, he juxtaposes uh, Thomas Huxley with George mm -hmm. Orwell, yep. and he says, you know, Orwell said that what we hate would ruin us. He says, but I think Huxley got it right. What we love would ruin us. What did he mean by that, you suppose? I think well, exactly what Neil was saying, that our, we are being amused to death. The things that we love and embrace are the things that are are destroying our ability to imagine and engage with God. Psalm 1611 says, God says, I will make known unto you the path of life. Everyone wants to know what God's will is for their life. Um, most men hate what they do. Mm. And as a result, they can't pass that on to their children. So you get a, you get a dad who is living a life of faith and he's just, he's engaged with God. He's engaged with his work. He, he loves what he does and he, he, and he does what he loves. Mm. So Psalm 1611, God says, I will make known unto you the path of life. In my presence is fullness of joy. At my right hand are pleasures forevermore. When, when someone experiences that, they, um, Albert Hubbard in the 1800s made this statement, the love you liberate in your work is the love you keep. So when we reach a high level of excellence in the, our God giftedness, what it does is it opens new doors for us to be able to demonstrate to the world who our great God is. Mm -hmm. Because now God gives us pleasures forevermore in the work that he's called us to do because this is most important because we're now walking in his presence i don't think i've got a great imagination necessarily but what little i've got was because of downtime time i wasn't plugged mm. into something interesting wasn't plugged into technology i had time to play outside and, and get imaginary things going and uh, all of a sudden cowboys and indians and all sorts of things and i was part of the play but i was making up the play around me uh, also just downtime when you have time to think do we do we mm. really have too Excellent. little time to really go into a mode where our kids aren't plugged into something and instead they're just alone? 
Yeah, alone and playing games. Yes, well, with something the, with the, the video games. They're, they're doing the thumb motor coordination. Uh, you, you hit it on the head. I don't see children outside playing anymore mm -hmm. these days. And I think one of the reasons for this is not only has the TV, video games, films robbed them of their imagination, but David said, if you meditate upon my words day and night, mm -hmm. everything you do will prosper. Joshua 1.8 said the same thing. This book of the law will not depart out of my mouth. I'll meditate on it day and night. We have to get the word of God back into our lives as adults. Mm -hmm. And if we will meditate, if we will, if we will chew on it, if we will think about it throughout the day, what will happen is that is what I believe um, stimulates our imagination. And our children, the same thing happens. God's word is alive, and it will never return void. And so we've got to get our kids back participating. And that's what we're doing with Lamplighter Theater. Every one of these dramas saturated with the truth of the word of God, so the kids are now thinking, what would I do in this situation? Mm. Would I have the faith to be able to trust God? when I don't think there's a tomorrow. We're going to get them plugged into something. Why not the Word of God? Why Amen. not the stories of the faithful? Amen. And if we can do that, all the better. Hey, listen, Mark, uh, you've got to run. I know you've got a speaking engagement here in about one minute. Okay. So uh, we very much appreciate you spending some time with us. Real quick, just give us a, uh, just about 30-second rundown. What you've got coming up, I want people to plug in if they can. Sure. First off, check out the website, uh, lamplighter.net. Yep, and then they can go to also to lamplighterguild.com, and it's going to be a week where we have some of the greatest masters in dramatic arts and visual arts um, around the world that are coming from London and from the US and they are going to inspire 16 to 50 year olds to be able to reach the highest level of excellence in their God giftedness so that they can reflect the image of God on the earth like it's never been done before. Mark Hamp, uh, Hamby with lamplighterguild.com thanks so very much for being here dear friend we appreciate you. Uh, friends uh, that's the kind of guests you can anticipate all during this day and I, I tell you what there's a lot there if you're going to get your kids plugged into something, don't get them plugged into the technology, the TV set, the new video games. Get them plugged into the great stories of the faith. Frankly, get them plugged into you. Actually, that's <laughs> that's that's what Deuteronomy 6 uh, talked about. Get them plugged into you. You go out there and get in the fight and bring your kids along with you. You go to church. Bring your kids with everything you do. Bring your kids with you because everything you do all day long is supposed to be a discipleship opportunity. All the better if you got kids. They are your disciples. How can you make disciples of them? Well, again, you bring them along, get them plugged into you. Not to the video games, not to the TV set, not to the new programs they got going out there, but get them plugged into you, at least most of all. You hear me? Listen, this is the Matt Freedom Show Truth, Justice, the American Family Way. Taking a break right now, you know we're going to return. AFR Talk. <laughs>